So today I'm going to teach you guys one of my favorite tricks within Lightroom and Photoshop. You're going to use smart objects, which are an extremely powerful tool, and you're also going to learn to use a technique called double processing, which takes a single raw file such as this, and I'm going to first process it for the highlights, and then I'll process it for the shadows down here, and I'll blend those two files together to give me a seamless image that looked like I took two separate exposures, one for the highlights and one for the shadows. So this is a good technique if you're taking a photo and the difference between the processing for the highlights and the shadows is a difference about two stops or less. So if I look down here and I pull this exposure slider up about plus two, it doesn't really degrade my image quality too much down here. Um, a little bit of color noise, but not too badly. If I go further, it starts to get nasty. So if you have to go further than plus two, plus 2.5, you're going to be better off just taking a second exposure. But that's something you can test out on your own. These are just going to be quick tips so you can implement this. So the first thing I'm going to do is process this just for the highlights. And I'll do that by going down here and I'm going to go to lens corrections first, do this real quick, um, and I'll leave it like that. So as far as processing goes, I'm just watching the sky up here and I'm going to pull up my blacks a little bit. This is going to be really quick. It's more just to implement the techniques so you can see how they work. And then I'll go back and maybe add a little bit of vibrance to it. And then I'll go into HSL and balance out my blue. I wanted to make those blues up in the sky a little bit more blue. And something like that maybe. Um, and I could always go up here to my whites and bring them out. Just remember, I'm just watching the sky right now. I don't really care about this foreground. So what I'll do after I process for the sky, and we can always readjust this later. I'll go down here, I'll right click on the image, and I'll go to export. And I'll just go up here to export. I have a preset for this. It's called raw export. And you're going to see why I'm exporting raw here in one second. And you can just choose anywhere you want to put this desktop, wherever you want. I have a special raw image export folder that I keep them in. And then file naming, none of this matters. You just want to have the original file. Um, so for file settings, just put it as original and export. So now I have my file show up in Adobe Bridge. I like to use Bridge because you can view the actual edits you're working on full size. And I'll go over Adobe Bridge later and show you guys another video why I like that. So the first thing we're going to need to do here, here's the file. So I'm just going to name this Sky. We just edited it for the Sky. And then I'm going to right click on that file and duplicate. And there's other ways of doing this as well. This is just my preferred method. So I'll call this bottom layer foreground. And then I'm going to open both of these at the same time. I'm going to hold down command or control on a PC. And then I'll right click. And I just want to go up to open in Camera Raw. So what this is going to do, it's going to reopen them. And Camera Raw is just like Lightroom. Same drop downs, they're just on these instead of a, a full scroll down menu bar. So for Sky, I just did that one. For Foreground, I want to click here. And it's the same file right now. Everything looks exactly the same. For the Foreground, all I want to do is bring out that detail so the foreground looks like it did when I was actually out there shooting. We don't need to worry about the Sky here because it's not a big deal. Uh, we're going to blend those two together in Photoshop. So that one looks good. The foreground looks pretty good, and we can always readjust both of these later. So now I want to select both by holding Command or Control down and clicking, and then I can just open Objects. Now, we can jump back there real quick if you don't have Smart Objects set up on your computer. It's something you need to do. So let's just open one of these, and when we open it, you'll see that at the bottom here, if it doesn't say Open Object for you, you can just click right here, and you'll want to click Open in Photoshop as Smart Objects. And I have Pro Photo RGB. You can use sRGB or anything else. It all depends on the monitor you're using. Really, I could use sRGB and see in the same color, but no big deal. Uh, you want your highest bits per channel and OK. So then when you hit Open Object, you'll probably have to close Photoshop down and restart it if it didn't have that before. So at this point, I have two different smart objects opened up within Photoshop. Now I just need to copy them as layers, one on top of the other, so we can blend them together. So what I'll do here is go over to either or, and I'll right click next to it. And all I'm going to do is go up here to duplicate layer. And then I'm just going to move it to the other one. So the other one says sky, right? So I just want to make the destination sky and hit OK. And I just want to verify that's there. So now both of these smart objects are one on top of the other right there. And I'll just close this one now. So this is my main file. So the only thing I want to do here is blend my foreground into my sky. So I'll put my sky up top. It's the base file. And then I'll put my foreground down here on the bottom. Now remember, if you wanted to make adjustments to these, since they are smart objects, you can always re-click them and open them right back up in Camera Raw. So you're not actually doing any destructive editing to the file. So I'll click OK. So I didn't do any editing there, but we'll jump right back in. So now all I have to do is make a layer mask up here over the top and brush in my foreground. So we'll do that. Layer mask. And then I'll grab a brush right here. Black brush. And I can first start to brush this, and then I'll use some tricks to, to help us make a, a nice adjustment there. I'm going to go with an opacity of 
I don't know, we'll start with like 75 at first and, and we can adjust it as required. So I'll go up here to the edge and I don't want to go overboard there. And we'll make a nice sharp line here on the edge using another technique. So I'm just brushing this through and you can see the, the brush strokes going over there. And the nice part is we can always come down to this foreground and darken it or brighten it as necessary. But we'll do that in a second after we make the layer mask. So you can see that black's concealing this sky layer and showing the foreground underneath it. So we need to make a nice line right along here. And to do that, I'm gonna click back on the sky layer, go to select color range. And I'm just gonna select right up here on the foreground right below the sky. What I want to do is I want to move this fuzziness slider around until there's a nice white line between the foreground and the sky. So maybe somewhere up in here. You can see that nice black and white contrasted line there and that's really what I want there. So somewhere right in there. So all that did is it made a selection of this. Now I can pop back to my layer and this will allow me to easily with my brush tool make a nice line. So I'm gonna go at 100% opacity for this. So something like right there. And you can see if I actually hold down Alt, you can see where it's making that line right along the top. And it's making that really nice sharp line. So that'll make an easy blend for me right there along the top. So what I'm gonna do now is hit Command D, that's gonna deselect. And now I can just cover in the rest of this layer to make sure it's all black. So if you want to toggle on between the layer mask and hold down Alt and click on your mask and you can see what it's doing there. The thing I do want to make sure of is that it doesn't get too much up into this area. So I'm going to go with a white brush, maybe a 10% and just feather that. I just don't want it to look too unnatural in there. So I'll toggle back now. So that's not bad. That's a quick and sloppy blend, right? So go in somewhere like that. It also looks like I don't want too much of this to come in right here. So I'm gonna go with that white brush and brush that back out. I might even go with 100% opacity. Right along there, we'll see how that looks. And this is just a quick and sloppy brush tool. Um, I would take much more time if I was actually editing it, but I think that looks okay. So we'll do it before, after, before, after. And you can take some more time to work on that. Now, I feel like I wanna balance the color out and the light out here. The foreground's a little bit too bright. So always remember, you can just pop back in here. And if you need to, you can just darken down the foreground so it looks more natural. So now that we've covered the entire dynamic range of the photo, instead of taking two multiple exposures, we can just group these together. So I'll click the top one, click the bottom one, then I can go up here to layer and then group layers. And you can use the shortcut con command or control G. So this would be just for dynamic range. Did I spell that right? Probably not, who cares? Um, so let's say you wanted to do a little bit more adjustment on balancing some light out before you continued your editing process. And this is just the first step of editing, um, getting the dynamic range right. That's always the first step you wanna take. But let's say I wanted to go ahead and balance this light out a little bit. I think there's more light hitting here and it's not really hitting here at the same degree. So I'm gonna do up here, I'm gonna go to layer, smart objects, and I'm gonna do new smart object via copy. Now this is a Photoshop CC technique, I believe. I don't think they had it in previous versions, but if there's another way to do it, let me know in the comments or let everybody else know in the comments. So I'm just gonna bring that up top. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna open back this back up in camera raw, and I'm gonna darken down the exposure a little bit. And remember, I'm just gonna balance this light up both in the clouds. So I'll just drag the whites up, and I'll probably bring this down a little bit. So something like this. So I just wanna do some touches of light so the light in the foreground will match what's hitting up in the clouds and it'll balance everything out a little bit. So I'm gonna hit okay here. So as far as this goes, I'm just gonna put a layer mask over this and I'm gonna hold down command or control on a PC and I and invert that. So now we can't see anything that's going on up there. All I wanna do here is grab my brush tool, B or brush right here. And I'm gonna go with a low opacity, maybe a 30 or 40. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mimic this light coming from the side that's hitting this area. And I'm probably just gonna do some touches of light right here. So let's see what that did. Yeah, see that balance, that, that light moving out a little bit. So it looks more natural. So there, before, after, before, after. So that helps out. So we are getting some weird blotchy effects here. And the key is just to look at it with your eyes and kind of determine what feels right. And then you could add that if you wanted to your dynamic range as well. So this would be the dynamic range blend. 
from there we can go on and edit any other way we like. I'd probably take another hour or two and edit through this photo to get a really nice bunch of color contrast adjustments and other things that I'll show you in later 10 minute photo tips. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Let me know in the comments what you think about this new style of short form tutorials. And of course I'll still have my long form going on. I'll kick some new ones out here in a few days, but I hope you guys have a good one. Enjoy and have fun out there. Bye.